This is an amazing feat of engineering. I was so sure they would have to relocate the launch pad, but they pulled it off with the cooling system. The next day, SpaceX and Elon Musk checked the water deluge system and the pad. The Starship launch pad is in excellent shape. The water-cooled steel plate doesn't need any refurbishment for the next launch. Well done to SpaceX team and contractors for designing and building such a durable system so quickly, Musk tweeted on X. Honestly, this is the most important upgrade which the fish and wildlife officials focused their attention on. After the first launch, the agency's biologists were reportedly in disbelief that SpaceX at the time lacked flame suppression technology like this for Starship, an industry and space agency standard. Such systems are designed to dissipate some of the heat and noise generated by a rocket. SpaceX's new system involves flooding 358,000 gallons of water from ground tanks into steel plates and releasing them through holes in the plating, as the Fish and Wildlife Assessment describes it. In April, Musk characterized it as a massive, super strong steel showerhead pointing up. Assessments of this second test flight will show whether SpaceX's new system is effective at reducing debris and pollution. What's clear is that not having such a system won't work. Steel is a ductile material rather than a brittle one, and it can't fracture like concrete did on the first launch, says Phil Metzger, a planetary scientist at the University of Central Florida who studies space economics. What we found was that it's comparable to a volcanic explosion. The pressure that was built up under the pad was equal to a volcano and the amount of gas mixed with the rocky material was comparable to a volcano. I think they've completely solved the problem. We shouldn't have a repeat of the volcanic eruption under a launch pad again, Metzger said after the launch. With all the benefits that the water deluge system system brings, Musk declared that Starship Flight 3 hardware should be ready to fly in three to four weeks. There are three ships in final production in the high bay, as can be seen from the highway. Indeed, SpaceX has a robust prototype program for Starship, and we may see Booster 10 and Ship 28 next in line at the OLM soon for the next launch. SpaceX engineering, manufacturing, and launch teams did amazing work, said Musk, expressing gratitude to his team. SpaceX engineers now have the task ahead to understand why the Starship vehicle detonated itself using its flight termination system just before completing its launch burn. The company has said it'll also study Super Heavy's explosion so future iterations of the vehicle can be returned to Earth for reuse, as it, along with Starship, are designed to do. SpaceX, meanwhile, just shared many stunning photos and videos showing the sheer spectacle of the Starship's second test launch. The world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed by developed powered by 33 Raptor engines lifting off from Starbase. Wow, what a stunning achievement. This was the first time that Raptor vacuum engines ignited and burned in near vacuum conditions, and they did it flawlessly. This is a great sign for all the future test flights and the four to five ships that are already built. Starship's hot stage separation was the first time this technique has been done successfully with a vehicle of this size. Watch the three center engines on Starbase Starship's upper stage gimbling just after separation. Right before they ignite for hot staging, the engines angle themselves outward to direct their exhaust towards the vented inner stage before recentering for ascent. The company expressed its gratitude and appreciation for its remarkable achievement. It tweeted, We thank the entire SpaceX team, our customers, Cameron County, spaceflight fans, and the wider community for their ongoing support and encouragement. If future test flights succeed, Starship could upend standard approaches to human exploration and science in space. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk has long championed the fully reusable rocket, designed to lift 150 tons into low Earth orbit as a way to get cargo cheaply into orbit and to get humans to the surface of the Moon and Mars. He suggested that Starship could deliver payloads to orbit for as little as $10 per kilogram, depending on the vehicle flight rate and how much of the savings SpaceX passes on to customers. It has the potential to launch more payload and more crew members at a lower price than any other launch vehicle that has ever existed, says Laura Forchik, executive director for the space industry consulting firm Astrolytical. Already, NASA is counting on the vehicle to be a centerpiece of its Artemis moon program, with a modified Starship slated to land astronauts on the moon during the agency's Artemis 3 mission a few years from now. The vehicle is 
is expected to be able to carry more than 100 tons of payload to the lunar surface in a single flight. That's more mass than humankind has cumulatively soft-landed on the moon so far. Spaceflight is a bold venture demanding a can-do spirit and daring innovation, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said in a post on Musk's social media platform X after today's launch attempt. Today's test is an opportunity to learn, then fly again. If Starship's full promise is realized, astronomy and planetary science could also benefit. For instance, space telescopes could be made much larger or out of heavier but cheaper materials. Or space agencies could launch fleets of identical spacecraft to distant destinations emboldened by the redundancy to take greater risks with the design or by making instruments more cheaply. If the mass and the volume of the payload are larger, then we can imagine other capabilities in space that we've never even done, Phil Metzger shared. Though there are many challenges ahead on this long and winding road to space, we believe that SpaceX will make it in no time. A year after the launch of the Artemis 1 mission, NASA is continuing to study the performance of the heat shield on the Orion spacecraft. This review may take several more months to complete. Jim Free, NASA Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, said at a November 17th meeting of the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee that Artemis II remained on schedule for launch on the Orion spacecraft's first crewed mission late next year, but that NASA would not proceed until it was sure it understood the problem and made any changes. In the months after Artemis I, which splashed down last December after three and a half weeks in cislunar space, NASA managers said that they noted more erosion of the material on the heat shield than expected during re-entry. They emphasized at the time that the erosion did not jeopardize the spacecraft because the heat shield still had a significant amount of margin of the ablative material known as Avcoat. Free said the heat shield was the one thing that we're still working through from Artemis 1. He didn't elaborate in his presentation what NASA was still studying with the heat shield and its performance on last year's flight. Lakeisha Hawkins, Assistant Deputy Associate Administrator in NASA's Moon to Mars program office, said later in the meeting that NASA expected to get a tentative root cause resolution on the heat shield erosion late next spring. We will make sure that all of us are comfortable with where they are with root cause before we start talking about flight rationale. She said engineers are looking at some of the factors that could have caused the loss of the AVCOPE material during re-entry, that included the skip re-entry trajectory performed by Orion and material properties of AVCOPE. Ground testing, she said, has been able to mimic the conditions seen on the heat shield during re-entry. NASA and its contractors are continuing to process the various elements of the Artemis II mission, including Orion, to keep the mission on track for a launch in late 2024. We're still pressing forward with the hardware because we don't see a reason to stop right now, Free said. If we find a reason to stop, we will stop. There is continued processing of the vehicle for Artemis 2, but we're just doing that to try to manage the schedule, Hawkins said. If we do need to go back, if we do need to undo things up to and including replacing heat shield components, we are entirely open to that. Neither Free nor Hawkins said what impact there would be on the schedule for Artemis 2 if the Orion heat shield needs to be modified or replaced. Placed. Hawkins said that other elements of the mission, including the Space Launch System rocket and ground systems, were on track with SLS in particular, having great margin on its schedule. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.